My mission in this segment of our mastermind is to give you a sense of an exponential mindset. It's the convergence of two, three, or four of these that we as exponential entrepreneurs and organizations are trying to do. You could make a business before with just one, but it's really bringing a number of these, converging them together that are transforming industries and creating disruption. It was the furry little mammals that were agile that were able to survive and ultimately become us. So for me, the analogy of the asteroid impact are exponential technologies. They're changing the environment so rapidly that agility is your key to success. The reality is there is a new kind of organization in town, right? This is not the kind of company that your father or grandfather started. And it's the fact that we're going from a linear to an exponential world. The challenge is that our brains, the 100 billion neurons, the 100 trillion synaptic connections, they evolved in a very different world. They evolved in the savannas of Africa hundreds of thousands of years ago where everything that affected you was within a day's walk and nothing changed generation to generation, you know, literally millennium to millennium. And our brains evolved for that world and our minds are local and linear, but we're living in a world that is global and exponential. Things are not changing day to day, they're changing hour to hour. And the, your reach to touch people is now the ability to impact a billion lives if you truly want to go that big. And so when you think about it, this is what it looks like. This red line is all of us. It's our investors, it's our shareholders, but this yellow line are the exponential technologies that we're using, we're building, we're investing in. And the disconnect between those two is either disruptive stress or disruptive opportunity. My mission in this segment of our mastermind is to give you a sense of an exponential mindset. So I talk about exponentials, what does that mean? What does that feel like? Again, we're all linear thinkers. You know, one, two, three, four, five, and 30 linear steps, you're 30 meters away. You've gone out your front door, you've crossed the street. But in 30 exponential steps, where an exponential is a simple doubling, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32. In 30 doublings, you're not across the street. You've gone a billion meters away. Put differently, you've gone 26 times around the planet. And it's that disconnect between linear and exponential that's really extraordinary. And it's what you as an exponential entrepreneur can take advantage of. Um, you know, exponentials are not intuitive. Uh, I'll give you another example that I love. You take a piece of paper, it's about 0.135 uh, millimeters thick. How thick would that be if you folded it 50 times? Very simple question. You might think it's, well, 50 times 0.135, but that's not it, right? We've got these doublings occurring. If you were able to fold a piece of paper 13 times, and you're not, but if you could, uh, it's about a meter thick. If you doubled it 20 times, uh, how far is it? Oh, it's about a football field. US, European, doesn't matter, roughly the same. Uh, 38 fold and you have gone around the planet. And 50-fold, the original question, it's from here to the sun, 93 million miles. And that disconnect is really what we need to understand, that our intuition is linear, and the world around us is exponential. So what we're seeing today uh, is faster, cheaper computers are the bedrock, they're the soil in which all these other technologies are growing, sensors, networks, AI, robotics, 3D printing, synthetic biology, AR, VR, blockchain, even quantum technologies. And it's the convergence of two, three, or four of these that we as exponential entrepreneurs and organizations are trying to do. You could make a business before with just one, but it's really bringing a number of these, converging them together, that are transforming industries and creating disruption. There's no better example of a disruption, and I'll use this uh, through our session here as an example. Uh, Kodak in 1996, at the top of its game, $28 billion market cap, 140,000 employees. What most people don't know is that 20 years earlier, a guy named Steven Sesson in Kodak Labs had invented the digital camera. And he takes it into the board of Kodak and goes, here's the future of Kodak. And they said, it's a toy for kids. It takes 0.01 megapixel images. 
And besides, it's in black and white, and we're in the paper and chemicals business, our profit center. And so they didn't take advantage of the digital camera, and a few decades later, they're bankrupt. In the same year that Kodak goes bankrupt, another company called Instagram gets acquired by Facebook for a billion dollars, but they've got 13 employees. And people laughed at that acquisition. Well, they're not laughing now, right, where the valuation of Instagram has been an above $100 billion. And so the question is, what business are you truly in if you're running a large-scale organization? Kodak was not in the paper and chemicals business. They were in the business, their MTP, we'll get to that, of preserving people's memories. When a better technology came along and they failed to jump on it, that set them adrift. You know, all of this is being driven by what's called Moore's Law. Here's Gordon Moore, the founder of Intel, who in, you know, creates the first integrated circuit in 1958. This is what that circuit looks like. Um, and literally uh, began to double year on year, every 12 to 18 months, it began to increase the number of transistors per piece of silicon. And Gordon Moore predicted it would continue for some amount of time. It was called Moore's Law. Well, it's continued for 50 years. And today we're seeing literally integrated circuits that have a 28 billion fold increase over the last 47 years. I don't know how to fathom a number that big. Uh, and here we see what Ray Kurzweil calls the law of accelerating returns. It's that last 50 years of integrated circuits, but what we've seen is computation going from mechanical uh, computers to relay, to vacuum tubes, to transistors, to integrated circuits. Every time one of these technologies runs out of steam, the next technology takes over. And it's continuing this way, and it will. We'll go to three-dimensional computing, photonics, quantum computing. So it's moving forward. Now, one of the frames that I wrote about in bold, and we'll talk about it, and I want to explain it here, is the six Ds of exponentials. It's one of the fundamentals of building exponential organization. Your mission is to digitize any aspect of your business possible, because when you begin digitizing something, you're able to dematerialize it, make it zeros and ones, and if that's the case, you can demonetize it because the cost of replicating those zeros and ones is effectively zero and democratize it because your ability to transmit it to the corners of the planet is effectively zero. In the early days, like in that first digital camera, the growth is deceptive. The first digital camera was 0 0.01 megapixels. The next year was 0 0.02 and 0 0.04. Very slow, deceptive growth. But remember this, double something 20 times, it's a million fold bigger. Double it 30 times, it's a billion fold, and eventually it disrupts. So you've seen these images before, right? On the far left is what it was like for me growing up, Radio Shack. And today, all of these things are now available on your phone as an app, completely dematerialized. And we're able to demonetize entire products and services. Your mission, again, is to digitize, to demonetize, and ultimately to dematerialize and democratize your products and services. Now, there's an analogy that I use about what's going on. We talk about it in the book, uh, and it's an asteroid impact moment. So let's go back 65 million years ago when a 10 kilometer asteroid struck the Earth. It changed the environment so rapidly that the large, slow, lumbering dinosaurs could not survive. It was the furry little mammals that were agile that were able to survive and ultimately become us. So for me, the analogy of the asteroid impact are exponential technologies. They're changing the environment so rapidly that agility is your key to success. Yeah, I just want to add a couple of things to that commentary. One of the favorite ways I have of framing it when you talk about 30 steps is if you go 30 steps linearly, it's really easy to gauge where you might be a third or two thirds of the way in that progression. We're really good at that linear extrapolation. But if I take 30 doubling steps and go to a billion and I'm 26 times around the world, it's really hard to gauge where I am a third or two thirds of the way. And as leaders, we need to make these approximations, right? Think about Peter's comment about the folding paper, right? It's inconceivable to us for many of us how that actually operates. And so this is the unbelievable switch. The one favorite use analogy I have is if the speed of a car 
had increased at the same pace at Moore, as Moore's law, yes. we'd have cars that went faster than the speed of light today, <laughs> right? So like, just get that into your head in terms of linear versus exponential. So that's the fundamental world that we're living in. Let's talk about how our organizations have been evolving to not keep pace with this in, in a sense.